What's up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Supreme Decisions. And today I want to talk to you about something that's easy, and this is something I think more of us should utilize whenever we're preparing for our cases, whether they're in state or federal court. And generally, for me, I used it as a tool for evidence grabbing. Because a lot of times, if you're late to the party or I was waiting for them to do something to slip up for the most part, and or sometimes it's just an overlap where they'll send something via mail, you know, snail mail, and the court date will come up. I don't have it, but I have a tracking number or something, and it's coming. But I want to talk about the real reasons why you're able to get a continuance and why you should use it okay now one of the reasons for getting a continuance is because you didn't have enough notice for the hearing this is why whenever you're giving a citation they give you 30 days before the first hearing now generally in that 30 days what you're supposed to have is the citation the officer's report And generally, if there's a search that's involved, you will have a search warrant, a search warrant application. But most importantly, you'll have a scene log, as well as any audio or video that was taken by the officer. And some cases, like I stated before, with auditors, they've actually used their personal cell phones to take pictures of someone or something of that nature so you can subpoena all of that or request all of that prior to your trial and if you don't have that prior to your trial you can request a continuance to gather that information and generally you're gonna have 30 to 45 days for your notice of a final hearing you'll have at least 10 days for what they would call an enforcement hearing and for most cases Um, A traffic citation falls under the enforcement hearing and at least three days notice for other hearings. So whenever you have a map hearing, a wade hearing, or preliminary hearings, all those evidentiary type hearings, those will be done in a shorter time or you're having a motion to dismiss. You can stay, um, excuse me, you can, you can move the court to actually set those motions for hearing within a three day period. A lot of times you can have them set earlier with an emergency hearing or an emergency injunction. I'll get into that later. The second reason was you need time to hire an attorney or a lawyer or apply for um, legal aid. Now, a lot of times, most of us don't take advantage of it because we haven't used them properly. We haven't used them as a guide. Instead, we're actually using them as people that are instructing us. When in fact, we are the employer and we should be offering instructions and just using them as a guide as we go through the legal process. But you also get time for that. Why? Because they are required to have you before a competent judicial committee. And part of that competence is understanding the legal process that is done properly. Because a lot of us have legal concepts or legal constructs in mind but we don't have them set properly so that's what um, the application for legal aid or even the application or the setup for a lawyer that is one learned in law and the third reason was you need more time because you're representing your own interests and at the end of the day that's a place of power if it is done correctly And I say that often because most of the time whenever I'm having a conversation with people, I've literally done a video that states, if you have a legal issue or court issue, do this first. 90% of the people that I speak with have not done the first three things that I've said done, do. And even in this video, I just stated basically two of the three things that you would have to do to start off a legal process. But most people will not do that. But until those steps are done, you are still deemed a ward of the state. You're still deemed incompetent. Because even when you're representing your own interests, you have to illustrate or exercise your right in writing. And it has to be done very precise. That's something, again, 
as we grow and as we go, I'm going to get into those. And last is just what I spoke about at the beginning. You need more time for important evidence or to subpoena important witnesses. Now, generally, what most people don't even understand, they'll set up their defense list because they've been doing wrong so long and they're only out for revenue. They're not working on the basis of law. So their testimony can be questioned in the basis of law to which they will incriminate themselves. But it goes back to the original statement where I did a video about understanding how to ask questions. So the importance of that is knowing, basically knowing your audience, understanding the questions, understanding what answers they're going to give, understanding what the right answer is. But there's also those subpoenas for those things that aren't turned over because we often hear about them not turning over crucial evidence such as the body cam footage, the audio from there, or having audio missing from body cam footage. And, you know, those are things that can be subpoenaed. Those are things that are important for every level of trial. So keeping that in mind, understand when to ask for a continuance, why to ask for that continuance, and now you're understanding how to apply in that continuance. I appreciate everybody that's been donating because, you know, that's the way we're growing. I'm setting up for a new platform, so keep donating. Apple Pay, Google Wallet, Venmo, my favorite cash app. If you don't have it, the link is in the description. And if you use mine, we both get paid. So let's keep going. Let's keep growing. Until next time.